What's up guys, it's Clancy, and we are kicking off today's video hot with a story time that I've been wanting to tell literally since this happened. Actually, not since it happened, because it was hard to talk about for a week, but I'd say a week or two after it happened, I was like, I'm ready to talk. And it stems from a question that you guys asked me, so this isn't just coming out of the blue. Pretty much half of the questions you guys ask have to do with Zach, my boyfriend. Uh, we've been going out for about uh, a year and a half now, and I got quite a few questions asking, do you guys fight? And the answer to that is yes and no. So like, no, we're not this perfect couple that's smiling all the time and happy, and we've never had an argument. So I guess it's that we don't fight, but we'll get annoyed with each other. We've never gotten to like this crazy fight that's lasted over a day. We always get over whatever it is within minutes with the exception of this one day or I should say night and by the way I have gotten permission from Zach to share this story it was in the summertime so it was July or August and I was set to work that weekend so I was filling in on the morning show on Sunday which on the morning show on Sunday your work day is from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. which is kind of sleeping in from what it usually is but still early I mean I have to get into work hair and makeup ready and all that by 6 so I decided I was not gonna be going out that Saturday night I know a lot of people go out on work nights all the time they drink they party they go into work it's fine they're cool that's not me I don't know I, I can't do a good job if I'm hungover over or not feeling my best like I, I I take my work very seriously especially being on air I can't look like a you know a flop and I I don't like drinking or partying or doing anything on a work night that's just not who I am even though everyone was going out to this really fun event in Cincinnati that night I knew I had to stay in and I was already in a weird mood just because we were hanging out with our friends during the day at the pool and they were all talking about the event and so my FOMO was starting to kick in. Normally, I don't care if it's out of sight, out of mind, whatever. But if I'm with humans who are making their plans, I'm like, let me in, get them from the pool, shower, all that, and then Zach leaves to go out. And this was at like six o'clock, so this was pretty early for him to be going out, but that's just when the event was and they were gonna be drinking, having fun, all that, while I was sitting at home watching TV. So eight o'clock rolls around and I decide, all right, it's time for me to go to sleep. And keep in mind, this is a very crucial part of the story. The reason I stayed in was to get a ton of sleep so that I could do a good job on the news the next day. So I could perform my best at work. It was all about the sleep. Let's just say if I would have gone out that night, I actually would have gotten more sleep. So I crawl into bed in the eight o'clock hour and I fall asleep and I wake up at 10 something, I wake up a lot of times throughout the night, by the way, it's like a weird thing, but I wake up at like 10 something, I'm like, oh, okay, Zach's still not at home, that's normal. I go to the bathroom, go pee, do my thing, and I go back to sleep. Then I wake up at like 2.10 and I roll over, Zach's still not there. And I'm just like, that's kind of weird. We're not in college anymore. We don't go to the bar until it closes. Just so you guys know, in Ohio, all bars close at two, or at least most of them. In New York, it's four, which I was at the bar when it closed many a times in college, but those days are over and I definitely think it's weird at this point so I try to go back to sleep but I'm like something is up so I physically can't I am laying in bed just thinking what the heck but he still could just roll on at any hour right well then three o'clock rolls around and at this point I'm just like this this isn't this isn't good like how, how is Zach not back at three he went out at six and I don't want to be like a psychotic girlfriend like where are you but I'm actually concerned about his safety at this point I want to say I waited until 3 30 when I sent the first text saying hey just want to make sure all's good and you're having fun just let me know you're okay no answer and Zach is always really quick to answer me usually. Like he has his phone on him, he'll answer me, no answer. So I wait until I want to say 3.55. For my boyfriend not to be home from the bar at 3.55, that's odd. And I give him a call, which that's like, I would never call Zach when he's out. Like I don't care what he does, you know what I mean? He's out with his friends, having fun, not my business. But I'm worried about his safety at this point. So I call him, no answer. When he doesn't answer that call, I, I think that's just when like I like broke down like I literally was like oh my gosh he's dead and you have to understand like you're you're listening to the story right now and you know he's not dead because you have seen him on my Instagram lately which by the way if you're not following me on Instagram link down below just have to say it he's been on my videos you know he's alive but this is all happening in real life for me so I believe this is when I started crying like literally I mean, I wasn't like crying, but like there were definitely tears in my eyes because I thought my boyfriend was dead somewhere, truly. And then when 4.15 rolled around, I'm like, yep, he's absolutely dead. And I actually checked my work phone. So you guys know I'm a TV news reporter. We get like work emails of like really bad car accidents to our phones. And I actually was psychotically checking that just to see like 
oh, is it like a car crash with like a 27 year old involved? You know, I don't know if he was like in his Uber or something. I even checked, I think the Highway Safety Patrol Twitter page to see if there were any, you know, car accident updates on there. Didn't find anything. My alarm, by the way, was set to go off at five o'clock that morning. So 4.30 rolls around, he's dead. 4.35, he's dead. 4.40, he's dead. 4.45, my boyfriend is dead. This is all I'm thinking. And then my alarm was set to go off at five and I'm like, there's no point in even just laying here until my alarm goes off. I spring up. And I'm just like, I, I, I need to go shower. Like, I need to go into work. And as I'm showering, I'm crying. For Zach to not be home at 4.45, that is the most absurd, crazy thing ever. And maybe there are some people who go out until that late, but that's just not our lives. The latest we've ever gone out is like two, if that's like a crazy night. We don't go out that late. And I feel like he would have texted me either way. And in that time, I think I sent him another text, like a psychotic person. As I'm showering, I'm just thinking, I can't go into work, like I'm going to vomit. How can I go into work knowing my boyfriend is dead? There's just, there's no way. But I physically couldn't call off because I was already filling in and they, they came to get someone last minute on the morning show on a Sunday. So like, I literally had to go into work. Plus, what was I gonna do? Like call in and be like, hey, I think my boyfriend's dead? Like, that's just weird. So get out of the shower, I'm still crying. Truly, this was the worst night of my life because keep in mind, I hadn't slept since two. Like I have, just imagine guys, like you're awake from two to 4.45 staring at the ceiling. A lot of us will joke around like, oh, you know, I'm just staring at the ceiling all night. Like, no, I'll be on my phone. I'll be watching videos. I'll be doing other things. I was truly staring at the ceiling, could not think of anything else but Zach and his well-being for hours. So I'm physically crying at this point, I'm going to the kitchen to make my tea. And then I do a double take because I like see something on the couch. You can probably guess where I'm going with this. Zach had come home while I was awake, mind you. And I simply did not hear him and he passed out on the couch which there's no reason i would have thought he would do that in the first place because he's never slept on the couch before in his life guys i'm not kidding when i saw him on that couch i i have never been so happy in my life oh and by the way the reason he was passed on the couch is because i think he just had too much to drink and he didn't want to wake me up or something you know coming in knowing i had work it was kind of nice logic but also he was definitely intoxicated in this moment so he's passed out imagine you're passed out after drinking a lot I come running over to him. I'm shaking, like my, my body isn't my body. It's like, I'm shaking, I am crying. I'm like, Zach! I'm running over, I jump on him. He's so scared and confused. Just imagine you're crying, significant other just jumping onto you and you have no idea why when you're passed out. And he's like, what, what? And he's so confused as to why he's even on the couch. And I'm like, you're alive! And then I'm like, what? Why are you sleeping on the couch? And then the anger hits where I was just so angry, which I get, like I don't have any right to be angry, but I was just so angry. And then as soon as I finished hugging him and realizing he was alive, that's when like my anger mode went in. He's confused, he's not sober. He actually, it's funny, he said he woke up with one contact lens in and the other one was in the kitchen or something. So that's interesting. And so basically one of the worst, most sleepless nights of my life did not have to happen. He was, like, think about it. I'm in my bedroom crying as he's just sleeping on the couch. So I think that's why I was mad. I was like, I went through hell and you're just sleeping right here magically and did not come into bed. So yeah, that's the question. Um, do you guys ever fight? That, I remember I came up from work and I was still angry and then we talked and then I was like, okay, it is kind of funny. All right, so right now Zach is working out. <laughs> he has no idea what I'm about to ask him. I did a Q and A and I told the story of the time you slept on the couch. What are your thoughts and you, you just all of a sudden see me run up to you? I woke up, I looked on the couch, and I saw you like grabbing me. And I was like, I just said, I don't know how I got here. I think, yeah. it's like, I don't know what's happening. I think those are your first words. You were like, I don't know. Yeah, I just, mm. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks. Comment down below though if you don't think I'm a total psychopath like if you're like, okay I can see where you're coming from because I kind of feel like a psychopath. I was just worried anyway moving on to more questions Do you think you have to have a certain personality to be a news reporter? No I mean, I think we all range the gamut like so much you have the super serious ones you have the I don't even know what to call me we need every type of personality on the news. Like, we need every race. We need every age. We need to represent the general population because we all have different interests of what to cover. Like, a 24-year-old woman might have different interests than a 50-year-old serious man. We need to cover it all because I'm naturally going to pitch stories that interest me more. What do your parents do for work? Which parent are you most like? Ooh, my mom works in, I think she's like the director of production of 
Oh gosh, let me look it up, it's on Facebook. The director of production operations at MSG Networks in New York, and then my dad is a carpenter. So I actually really, really like that I grew up in like a blue collar, white collar household. I appreciate both professions equally, and which parent am I most like? I think I have a lot of my mom's personality, probably have more of my mom's looks, but my dad and I are so alike also. So I really do think I'm split down the middle. Any advice on how to handle a breakup that was done over text? Literally, don't worry about that at all. If someone's gonna break up with you over text, bye Felicia. Do you plan on doing TV for the rest of your career or will you pursue a different path? I have no freaking idea. Seriously, I could see myself doing this career until I retire and I could also see myself branching out in a completely different direction and doing something different. It's just really where opportunity takes me. Has it ever been difficult to manage both work and YouTube? Yes, very difficult. I think it has more of an impact on me than I even realized just with my free time, even just the stress of doing things. Like today, I'm actually filming three different videos, which is more stressful than it probably sounds, but I can't be bored. I don't handle boredom well, like at all. And I love just being busy with things, but not just busy with like, oh, I'm going out drinking, like no, like productive things. So yeah, definitely is a little bit stressful, but I really wouldn't have it any other way. How long did it take you to start earning money on YouTube initially and how much do you earn now? Please tell the whole story. Oh gosh, well at first I went into YouTube not earning a dime. I didn't know you could earn money, I just did it for fun. And then I started earning money when I was a junior in high school and I was earning like literally nothing. You have to hit like a hundred dollar threshold. So I think at the beginning I wasn't even hitting that threshold. You have to earn a hundred dollars a month for them to actually send you a check. Otherwise they'll just keep the money until you get that hundred. So I don't even think I was hitting the threshold. And then you asked how much do you earn now? I got that and also questions about salary asking do news reporters in very small markets start out making nothing or how much do they make? I got a lot of questions with that. And listen, I'm not gonna give you exact numbers on how much I make. I don't know, I just don't think that's classy. I don't know and I, I think salary should be talked about more. I am still part of an age where or like I grew up, you don't talk about salary. That's how my family was. I mean, to this day, I don't know how much my parents make. We really grew up not talking about it. But I will answer you on this. TV news reporters, when you first start out, typically make nothing. I mean, so I made a little bit above nothing, if that makes sense. I started out in Dayton and I got a salary that was very, very lucky compared to what a lot of people make when they're first starting out. But don't get me wrong, it was nothing compared to what my friends in New York City were making in their finance jobs. Like seriously, nothing. However, I will tell you guys, I don't know if I've ever said this in a video before, but my first job offer from, this was, I'll just be blunt, this was Panama City, Florida. Market, I think maybe like 150 or 180, something like that. I was offered $23,000 a year. And listen, I'm not trying to, like if you make 23,000, I'm not trying to like disparage that, but I'm just saying when I heard that, I thought every job was gonna be like that and I was so discouraged and I like could, really couldn't believe it. But I just wanna let you guys know, you don't need to accept a job that pays you 23,000 a year. That was the lowest offer I've ever heard by a long shot. I won't say the salary I made in Dayton, but let's just say it was a very significant amount more. In general, I have heard Florida doesn't pay a lot. I heard the saying, they pay you in sunshine, but personally, I want money, not sunshine, so. Yeah. What do you like most about living in Cincy? P.S. I love you and your videos. Thank you so much. Definitely the cost of living is up there. I mean, what you can afford, like all of this for such a cheap amount. Oh my gosh. And it's just the perfect size city. Like it's not New York where there's so many people you're overwhelmed, but it's not the middle of nowhere where there's like no humans. How's living with the boyfriend? With the exception of that one night I told you guys about, <laughs> it has been, seriously, it's been great. Actually, I was thinking about doing a whole video with Zach on just like moving in together the pros, the cons, all of that. So let me know if you wanna see that. What's the hardest part about waking up so early? I feel like it's just a mental thing. Like no, and the rest of the world has just so many more hours to sleep. So I think I just, it's just getting over that mental thing. Like, well, you gotta wake up sometime because six o'clock rolls around and I'm like, the rest of the world is just now waking up and they're doing the whole like, ugh, routine. So it's just, I'm just doing a little bit earlier. And it's really just getting through the first like, five minutes of getting up. Most of us, it's just the first five minutes that are hard. And then you actually wake up and you're like, oh, okay, this isn't so bad. Sorry, I'm changing the angle of this because the sun is being weird. Okay, we're going rapid fire. What's something people will be surprised to learn about you? Probably just that I am not as outgoing as you might think. Like I'm more reserved, introverted to myself. I don't like being the center of attention at all. I'm never the loudest person in a room. Unless I'm with like close friends, then I can be a little bit weird, but I really just like, I keep to myself naturally. And if you like approach me or I approach you and we're talking, then I turn into like, boom, like it's like a, a, a switch is just like turned on and I'm like the most what's up person. But naturally, I just tend to stick to myself. It's just like my natural disposition. I don't know. 
it's it's a confusing thing best date you've been on definitely my first date with Zach it was simple we just went to get some baby bop which is like a fast food type thing we went to the FC Cincinnati game which is a soccer team and then we went to a bar after and just up until that point I had never gone on a first date where I was like whoa that was like so much fun I'd gone on some especially actually just a couple of months before that where I was like oh I think that was good like I think I'd like to see him again but Zach was seriously like the only person I've been on a first date where I was like oh my gosh I have to see him again how did you feel when you first found out you were going to be a newscaster terrified terrified like you guys have no idea like the amount of fear and anxiety that I had was insane because it's so weird it's like you show up for your first day of work you go on air and you're like reporting the news as if you're an authority but what people don't know is you've never done this before I mean I guess they probably do know if they've never seen your face but I even felt that like working in retail Victoria's Secret my first day and people would come to me and ask me a question I'm like little do they know this is my first day and they probably know more than I do seriously because I didn't really shop at Victoria's Secret that much then so yeah I was just flat out terrified did you ever think about not going to college no but I, I, like, I feel like the trendy thing is to be like oh yes like you don't need to go to college and yada 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 to me it was always like I wanted to go to college. Studying, doing homework, getting good grades, like that's what I kind of thrived on, which can be a little bit hard when you get out of school because you're not tested the same way. Like for me, a lot of validation and confidence would naturally come from, oh, I'm making straight A's, I'm doing so well here and there, and teachers like me and this and that. And then when you're in the real world, you're not judged like that, especially for me. I'm just a TV news reporter who's actually pretty much sucking in the beginning. Like seriously, I suck. So yeah, that's a little bit weird just for like the transition from college. Did your parents feel a certain way when you moved in with your boyfriend? My mom always told me, I don't record, like, so I can't explain it. She never like told me I can't do anything. Like, you know, I'm a grown adult, but that she doesn't believe in people moving in before marriage. Like you have to be married to move in with someone. And she told me that opinion or advice a lot of times. But as soon as I told her like, hey, I really actually do want to move in with Zach, like she never ever said like, I don't think you should do this. Which is nice because I didn't know how my parents would feel. We are not married, obviously. I actually get a lot of some of these questions like, oh, like tell us about your husband, blah, blah, blah. I feel like a lot of people think we are married because we live together, but no, we are just dating. And then my dad, we never have talked about it. I can't even imagine having that conversation with my dad. We're not that kind of people who talk about things like that. Do you ever wish you chose a different career and get jealous of people with normal work hours? So I never wish I chose a different career, but do I get jealous of people with normal work hours? All the time. I mean, all the time. When I'm so freaking tired and I can barely keep my eyes open and it's a time, you know, a time of the day when you really should be, like <laughs> 7 p.m. I'm jealous and when I see people, you know, they can just go to happy hour and this and that and it's carefree and also just their work days, they get out of work like three hours early. A lot of people, Fridays in the summer, they get out at one and it, it, that's just never gonna happen for TV news. Working holidays, you know? So yeah all the time but at the same time it's like this is what I want to do like this is a choice and if I had to work these hours for any other job heck no like I'd be miserable but it's this job like I'm doing it for a reason best relationship advice I think you just always have to keep the other person in a loop with how you're feeling not just about your relationship but about different things in life because if I'm in a bad mood because of x y and z and Zach comes home especially we're living together I can't just randomly pop up and be like hi like you know what I mean so you have to like explain like where you're coming from because it could be like okay like what's wrong with her you know what I mean and it's it's hey like this happened at work today or like something else and so I think it's just like always keeping someone in the loop of how you're feeling and that which is something I'm not used to I'm not good at I don't like talking about that type of stuff like I just like keeping to myself so that's something that I am personally learning but yeah my stomach is growling guys I need to eat lunch I'm hungry so I'm gonna end this video but I hope you guys enjoyed this hope you enjoyed the little story time thrown in and the Q&A and all of that and if you're still watching and you're not subscribed and you don't have your notification bells turned on to know when I will post a video, then now is the time to do so. I sound like a robot. I'm going to go. That's my cue. Social media link down below if you want to follow me and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.